SharePoint is a Microsoft application that allows you to make a website that acts as a hub for your company. This is where you can post training videos, vacation calendars, lists, anything you wanna communicate with your team within your organization. So in this video, we're gonna take a deep dive into SharePoint sites. We're gonna talk about how to make your site, how to edit it, how to add permissions or add members and all that. And then finally, we're gonna go over how to automate it. So if you want to automate it with some of your other business needs, and we're gonna use Power Automate to do that. Now there are two options when it comes to building your SharePoint site. You can either add it to your personal account, like add SharePoint as an option on your personal Microsoft account, which would be like liz.rao at outlook.com. Or, which is what I recommend, is actually set up a business Microsoft account so you have everything wrapped into one because the other way to do it is it has, you have two different accounts and it's kind of hard to navigate. So I'll show you that in a bit. Now, if you already have a Microsoft 365 business account, all you have to do is log in and you should have access to SharePoint. It comes with the business accounts. But if you do what I did, which I don't recommend, you can also add on for $5 um, a month, the SharePoint onto your personal account. So if you have something like liz.rao at outlook.com, you can add SharePoint to it for $5. But the thing is, it makes you sign up for a, biz, a pseudo business account. So it will be like liz.rao at raolabs-onmicrosoft.com. And it's like, creates this false business, um, like, Three, Microsoft 365 account. So you have two logins. So you have to log in with the business one to use SharePoint. So if you go here, you'll see I am logged in with this weird pseudo business account that's not real. Like it, there's no Outlook attached to it. It's kind of funky. It's not really my Outlook. It's like they're forced you to make a business plan. So I recommend not adding it to your personal account and getting this weird on Microsoft thing and not doing that and actually signing up for a Microsoft 365 business basic and have one account. Because right now I have two accounts, but I'm signed into that pseudo business account because it forced me to make that when I tried to add it to my personal account. So that's what I recommend just setting up the business account. It's the same price. I think the other one was $5 extra, this is $6. And you get all these extra apps as well. So I just feel like I don't know why I did that. So I'm going to redo it and do it all through a business account. But for the sake of this video, I will just be using, um, signing into Microsoft 365 using that weird pseudo situation. But I will tell you, it, it gets kind of funky. So if you get kind of confused, that's why. So once you're in Microsoft 365, all you have to do is just type SharePoint and then just click SharePoint. And this will bring up your actual SharePoint site. So you can go ahead and create a site. If you already have created a site, they will show up here. So you'll see create site. Once you click create site, you can either click a team site or a communication site. They're slightly different, but essentially the mechanics are all the same, how to edit elements and all that. So I created a communication site. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So this is what it looks like. I'm just using a standard template. So you can see I'm signed in to my you know, pseudo account and I've made my communication site. It's super easy. You just have to pick a name. I just named it Rao Labs communication site. So I knew that I made the communication one. Now, <clears throat> what you need to focus on here is actually this edit button as well as the share button is mainly what you're going to be using. You can also add new pages and posts and all this extra stuff. Um, but essentially you're going to use a template. How to add a template. You actually can go to settings and click apply a site template. And then you can choose from a variety of templates and it will auto adjust your entire site to that template. So you can see I'm using new employee onboarding because this is what I want to do. I want to make some training videos and all that. So now that that's applied, you now just click edit and it's super easy. It's drag and drop so you can move things. See how I just dragged and dropped it you can move these elements. Now, how you add these elements, you have to add these things called sections. So see how this highlights the whole thing and it's a section. And then within the section, there's text. You have to make a new section so you can click sections and add whether you want two columns, three columns, all that. This is a two column one. You can see that this is one column and this is another one. Once you're in here, you can start adding this plus button to add all these extra stuff. 
so I could add more text. And you can just search in here to see what's available. You can even embed code in here as well. So you can get an embed one, which is what I'll be using for um, adding training videos. All you do is upload your training videos to Stream, Microsoft Stream, and then you can embed the code. So I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. But basically you can add images, quick links, whatever. So let's say I added this text. Then once you're in the text, you can actually, it just works like a regular text box. Some of these other ones, you can actually add, edit the web part. So this image is a web part, so click edit. And then you can add a link um, and there's some other options here. So if we just go down, let's go to this hero section, press edit, see how there's more options. You could do two tiles, you could do one tile, five tiles, whatever. And then within the hero, you can edit these and add links and customize the background image. And it's kind of just like click and drag and then customize it on the right hand side. But just notice that there's all these edit buttons and that's how you edit your web parts. So you can go in here and edit this. And again, it's just drag and drop. So you can drag and drop things wherever you want. So see how that I can drag this over here and paste it over here. It's very easy to use. Now, once you're done playing with everything and embedding everything, all you have to do is press republish and it will automatically republish your site. Now, by default, your site will not be allowed to access by external users. So how you look at your site's permissions is you go to the settings tab here and click site permissions. And if you go to share site, you can type in someone's email, but if I use a Gmail one, it will say it's outside of my group. So you actually have to go into the admin to change that setting because right now I can share. Um, there's no limited control. I ha I'm the site owner um, and then I have a couple site visitors as well, but in order to do your advanced permission settings, you actually have to go in through the admin section, which is what I'll show you here. So what you have to do is you have to go back to Microsoft 365, click this admin section over here, and then it will pop up this kind of admin, kind of scary looking thing. And you actually go to show all in order to see everything and then click SharePoint. And that will pull up the admin access for SharePoint specifically, and then go to active sites and then click your communication site. And then you can actually go into edit and change your permissions over here. If you follow this and go to policies, mine says external sharing, files and folders on the site can be shared with anyone. Yours won't automatically have that. It will be um, new and existing guests or only people in your organization. You actually have to go in here and check that and save it. So that's how you go to, ex to save it. So that way you can send it out to anyone with an at Gmail address or whatever, but they do have to have an Outlook account. So you can send it to somebody with a Gmail account, but when they click the link, they actually have to sign up for an Outlook account. So it's kind of confusing, but you can send um, with the SharePoint site. I can, I can add someone, share it to somebody with an at gmail.com, but when they get the link, they have to sign up with or create an Outlook account or sign in with an Outlook account to see your SharePoint site. But that's how you get it so it doesn't like, it. it's so that you can't just send it to only people within your organization. You have to actually go in here and edit the settings. Now I did mention that you can add training videos or tutorial videos straight from stream. So what you're gonna do is you actually press that edit button and add a new section. So go ahead and press new here, little plus. I'm gonna do a one third left. And then once you're inside here, you'll see if you kind of hover, you'll see this little plus button. So you can add different parts to either side. You see that? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in embed. Well, it says frequently used, but if you don't see that, you can type in embed. And go ahead and click that. Now what you have to do is go find the actual embed of what you want. So if we go into actually our website here and go into our documents, you can go and see what you have in there and you have to add a video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna X out of here, we'll republish, but it's fine, we don't have the embed. 
we're gonna go to site, um, the settings right here, site settings, and we're gonna go to actually um, site contents. So go ahead and click that. And then you'll see right here, we don't have anything. We have this document section. Now this is where you put your video. So I just threw a video in here. And once you have your video in here, you can go ahead and click this video and pause it so it's not playing. And then uh, click this little drop down here and click embed, pull that and copy your code here. And then um, go back, go ahead and exit after you've copied the code and exit out of this view, go back to your site. So I just click the top here, um, press edit, and then go back to add embed and then control V here to paste it in here. And then bam, here's your video. And then you can add on this side, like um, a text or a button, um, whatever you want. You can add a button here um, and make it like a link to maybe like the actual spreadsheet that you're reviewing here or whatever. Um, then go ahead and exit and press republish. And then bam, we have an embedded video here. It could be a training video or whatever here as well. And then you can kind of fill out whatever you want on the left hand side. But I wanted to show you the embed function because it's very powerful as long as you can just copy and paste that code in there. Lastly, I wanna talk a little bit about automations because the cool thing about using Microsoft products is now you can automate things. So I just made a new flow and I made an automated cloud flow and I just typed in SharePoint, but let's go ahead and edit this flow just so you get an idea of what you could do. So what I have here is a flow. Now I can say when an item is created on my site, on the list employee onboarding, I can then create a worksheet or do any of these objects. So you can click here and add an action and you can do anything in SharePoint. If you just type in SharePoint, there's all these options, create a sharing link, stop sharing an item. You can do all sorts of SharePoint items. So let me just continue with SharePoint. All these list folders, create a link, copy file, create an item. There's all these SharePoint options. And that's the cool thing about using Power Automate along with a SharePoint site. Now, the thing is you need to actually log in to Power Automate. You just type in Power Automate, log in, and log in with this. And then you can even add in your Outlook as well. Now this only works with the business account because it does not, the Outlook does not work with personal, automating personal emails. But you can even say when an item is created, send out an email. It's really cool software that I think you should take a look at. The other option is to use Make which also is like very similar. You can type in SharePoint and sign in. Yeah, here's Microsoft SharePoint Online and you can sign in, get a list, list pages, all these options, download a file, upload a file, create a folder, all types of things that you can do with Make as well. So if you don't wanna use Power Automate, Make also has a connection to SharePoint as well. Now, if you're interested in other software in order to build websites, I will link my video up here, which is about Framer, which is another really cool drag and drop website builder. Now it's not a Microsoft product, but it is very good for building low code websites. So check that out. Otherwise I will see you guys next time.